Hi there, James with Bespoke again, and this is an after action report of the TK45. And if you didn't know it and you haven't seen me mention it on social media so much and baffling on, I actually bought one of these. Um, I picked up the C model. This is no lie. <laughs> I actually bought it. I haven't just took it off the shelf and used it at game day, as many of you uh, think. Bought it myself, bought a load of mags, bought the battery stock extension from AirTech Air Studios. Sorry. Um, and a few of you have been <laughs> speculating that I wasn't sort of being honest with this. I am. So I bought this. I took it to a weekend event just gone. I played the Saturday at Fireball Squadron in Bassett's Pole, uh, which is near Sutton Coalfield. And I had an absolute blast with this rifle. So first I want to talk about the pros. Now the magazines are 120 rounds. They're nice. And it wasn't till like I put a fresh magazine into the TK45 um, to put down some covering fire on a building where there's a lot of players. So I slapped a new magazine in and do like literally a start to finish burst on full oil. I just I just peppered this building to keep people's heads down. And I didn't realise until that point how many rounds 120 rounds is. Because throughout the day, like your single shot and your full auto, and you think you're going through your mags, but then when I put a fresh mag in, did a long burst on full auto, I found that the, the magazine capacity was like, you know, well up there, especially for an SMG. You don't expect to have that many rounds in the magazine. As you can see, I've done a few modifications to the rifle. I've used one of the rail extensions that come in the box with the TK45 to actually get two, which is a nice feature. Uh, Crytek can learn a lot from that because they used to give you like one, I think, was it? Yeah, you know, especially with a vector which comes with like screw holes, you know, exposed. They give you one rail section. What's that all about? Um, so I put the rail section on there. I'm using a copy, it's not a real one, it's a 40 star grip, which I like. Um, when I owned my vector, I actually wanted one of these, but we didn't have any in stock, so I ended up modifying like a Magpulish uh, style AFG to fit the, the gun. But I think it works well because the grip follows the lines of the Magwell as you'll see here and as you the optic you'll see i'm using an fc1 this was actually bought second hand for a friend of mine um which you know is a nice little square optic i thought it was you know, a little bit futuristic looking a little bit modern nice and low profile it wasn't massively in the way um and when because they come with this little rise amount here when using like uh, a lower mate uh, mesh face mask because you know in, in like fire, if you're over to fireball squadron in bassett's pole it's a great site it's very not small but very close knit and you sort of fighting in between uh, dense foliage and stuff like that so it's nice to have something on your face to protect yourself so I found that when I was using the TK45 with the mesh face mask I could still see through the red dot sight so I've got the uh, 40s grip and uh, the red dot sight on there I was running about uh, 5 or 6 mid caps which I got as well as the TK45 if you haven't seen the Bigfoot D3 CRM small style chest rigs on the website, be sure to check those out. We're going to have them back in stock this week, so they didn't last long last time we had them in, but it's perfect because one of those D3 CRMs straight out of the uh, the bag as you get them, uh, even with the M4 in plastic inserts in the magazines, I can get six in there. They're slightly really nice and they don't fall out. So, uh, in terms of performance, this thing. I was using it out the box. I tend to use 0.28s or 0.3s with a lot of my rifles. Um, so chrono-wise, I think on the day it was about 345 to 348. So absolutely perfect for woodland. That's with the uh, variable velocity spring guide that they've got in here wound all the way out. So that was at the lowest FPS sort of setting that you can get out of this thing. Obviously, you can use it. Well, all the, the only thing that I would use that. Um, sort of feature four is if you know you get sort of spring fatigue over the time of you owning the rifle safe so if you put like 10 12 thousand rounds through this thing and then you start getting sort of uh, spring fatigue so it sort of settles around about the 320 mark for example I could just wind that up a little bit and depending on the sight rules and where I go I can dial that in which is a perfect result there was a couple of uh, in fact there's one of the TK45 there on the day and we'll, I will stress this, and I know um, this will come across very <laughs> uh, bespoke, positive, but um, what I will say is all the TK45s that us bespoke have bought into the UK are UK spec. And what that means is that they come into us at the right FPS and the right muzzle velocity for both uh, platforms, and they come with black flash hiders as well. So what I found was there was another guy running one of these, 
on the field on Saturday, which was Phil Buckman, a good friend of mine. He, worked, he writes for one of the uh, Airsoft magazines, and he was actually running the longer version. And straight through the chrono in the morning, he was running about 385, 390 FPS. So you can you can see that uh, when if you was turn up to a game day and you fire in that FPS, you're going to be a little bit annoyed that you know your new gun that you just bought you can't even use. Phil is a very competent gun tech. Um, so what he did while he was there, he took it apart on site and he downgraded the spring to give him about a, a joule or just over. I'm not sure what his uh, rifle was growing after that. He had an absolute blast with it. We um, give our opinions back and forth in the day when we bumped into each other and what we did find was that even though I'm using, I use two, two eights and threes in all my AEGs, um, I did have to go down to a two five with a TK45 um, and this was literally just because it was very, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it an issue, but what I, what I found is I dialed the hop in, and as I was firing the magazine, obviously the rounds were flying nice and straight. I had to go down to a 2.5 two because of the threes that I took with me were a little bit much for the hop unit, but um, Phil said he was having the exact same issue. And then what we found was uh, when we were firing the TK45, what you'd do is you'd fire a couple of rounds, and it's almost like the the hop unit would find a sweet spot and then they would just, they literally, they would they would fly and you know, they, they had some absolute perfect distance on it. Even the, for the uh, the compact version, the range was absolutely superb once you'd shot a few rounds through. It's almost like the, the hop unit needed warming up, but um, so I, I, in my opinion, I think the TK45 would benefit from a new hop rubber. Um, I'm not sure what they fit with the standard rifles from the factory but we might pull this thing apart and see what we can do to it. I mean, 99% of airsofters will upgrade their gear uh, after they've bought it anyway, but you know, after I'd fired you know, a mag or two throughout the day, um, once we was getting into the firefights, because Fireball runs like two games in a daytime, so you run from the morning to lunchtime, you'll stop, and then after lunchtime, you'll run another game till, till they call it index. Um, so after I'd fought, as long as I was firing the rifle regulate, it seemed to be absolutely fine. It was almost just like once, um, let's say, we were laying at ambush and we were just waiting for the enemy to come up on us, we'd settle down for a bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, what I found was the hop would just settle a little bit, so two or three rounds through the hop unit, and then eventually it would settle and literally they would they would they would go. So um, from what I know, the KWAs do benefit from hop upgrades out of the box anyway. Um, but by no means does that does that say that you've got to buy one of these things and start chucking money at it straight away because as soon as the, the hop had sort of bed in a little bit, two fives, they were just slinging out there 50, 60 metres with ease and the rate of fire on this thing with 11.1 .1 LiPo with that AirTech Studios uh, extension on the stock, I was running a 2200 milliamp twin stick 11.1 .1 LiPo and it was just absolutely perfect. I know Phil was running his on a 7.4 um, which in my opinion did sound a little bit lethargic but um, he was using the recoil model as well so that has to have an aspect in it as well so wholeheartedly recommend the TK45 series it was an absolute blast um, to use this on the field and a few of the guys that I went with but literally halfway throughout the day I put it away and they were like why are you putting that away you know you've been absolutely ripping with that all, all morning and it was literally just because my PP19 that I took as well um, since I bought it, it hadn't really worked very well, um, so I'd done a bit, few bits and pieces of that to get it working. So I wanted to, I wanted to run it. You know how it is on the field. You want a bit of variance. You want to switch between platforms. So I just did that. But what I will say is <laughs> that PP19 that I do have, which is an LCT, has every upgrade you can think about it in the box, um, which it, which it has now because when I bought it pre-owned, it was a complete mess. Um, it has full upgraded in a barrel hop unit. You you know it's had so much money thrown at it, and still at the end of the day, honestly, I would say that I would rather have ran the TK45 just because it was such a blast to use. Um, the magazines ran perfect all day, even when we were testing on the heavier ammo like the two eights and the threes in the morning, just to get the hop set and find out the good medium that I wanted to use uh, for the day. Um, you know, the magazine's fed absolutely flawlessly, which is kind of unheard of in airsoft. Most mid-cap magazines have a bit of a struggle when it comes to heavy ammo. Um, but, you know, it's not the lightest of rifles. 
The C comes in at about two, two and a half kilos, maybe just a little bit over. The ERG version of the, the 10 inch was, you know, about just over three kilos, I think it was, so superb. Loved every second of using this rifle. Can't get, you know, can't sort of uh, recommend it enough. The high end sights were a lovely addition. And we did sort of say to the like, the Fireball Facebook group when we were going there, saying we're going to turn up on the day with the rifle and see what people's opinions were. Loads of people came up to me and wanted to test this thing out, which they did, and all of them said that they would, you know, if they had the money um, spare, they would go and buy one. So thank you for very much for tuning to the last video we did on this TK45. We'll be doing more videos on this because I think this gun deserves it, and we're going to do some pimpage to this thing and turn it up to crank it up to 11. So thank you for tuning in for the after action report of this thing. I loved it. I think you're going to love it. We've got plenty in stock on the website. So if you do want to shove an order in, bespokeairsoft.co.uk. We have run out of spare magazines now because I think those that were ordering were ordering spare magazines. We're going to have some more of those in very soon, don't worry. Uh, and for those looking into the Bigfoot D3 CRM chest rigs, we're going to have more this week, hopefully. So we'll have plenty back in stock and plenty for you to order. So stay tuned. We'll be putting updates on the Facebook page throughout the week. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, go hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you're alerted of new, videoed, new videos. I'm slowing my words now because it's quite late here. Um, and I'm glad uh, that you follow us on, on the YouTube channel and I hope you'll enjoy the future content that we've got coming out for you. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.